Hi there, everyone. Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And today, I wish to return to that glorious world of Dungeons and & Dragons and look at something that I think we kind of take for granted within the game and how it can be, honestly, a really great thing to utilize more of with our own writing. And that is terrain, the environment. Yes, I know, this is something, like I said, people honestly kind of take it for granted. Of course you're going to talk about the swamp you're going into. Of course you're going to talk about the creepy dungeon. Of course you're going to describe the opulent chambers of the duke of which your party is about to assassinate. Or the tavern in which every party begins. Of course you're going to describe these things. It's just a part of Dungeons & Dragons. We've come to expect it. And yet, because it's one of those things that we just kind of take for granted, it might be that we're not fully utilizing it as we should. Now, when it comes to playing Dungeons & Dragons, you don't have to be like Matt Mercer, who pulls out just these gorgeous miniature sets for every single major battle or important set piece. Now, if you do have the resources to do something like that, definitely do a couple of those because they can be a whole lot of fun and it definitely helps keep better order and track of what's happening when you have big action set pieces or battles or boss battles. However, not every game is going to have those kinds of resources and that's absolutely fine. Dungeons & Dragons is a communal storytelling experience. The Dungeon Master leads the campaign, but the other players fill in all of the details and make all of the choices that allow the story to go in whatever direction it goes into. And this should honestly be, I think, how the terrain is utilized as well. The Dungeon Master creates the world and the characters then they're playing in it, help to populate it, and then shape it through their decisions. As such, when I think about this, I have some advice I think can really help players and dungeon masters utilize the environment of their games a whole lot better, and can also help us as novice writers learn how we can make our stories more engaging through the use of the environment. So, three quick bits of advice for dungeon masters and for players. First bit of advice is this. I want you to think of the environment as kind of a coloring book. The dungeon master paints the general outline of everything that is there. Let's think of starting off your game in a tavern. Uh, either you wake up there drunk or someone, your patron has called you there or you've been summoned by the king's guard to help save the princess, whatever, you're at the tavern. Well, the dungeon master helps kind of give a brief description of the tavern and some of the people there. And then the players help to shape the atmosphere and everything of the tavern within. They can be all like, hey, so, like, what kinds of characters are there? Like, how many how many people are there to help save the princess? How many people are there just getting wasted? Uh, what kind of music is being played? Was the ambiance? The dungeon master should not sit down and spend 15 minutes describing the environment. That is boring. Instead, give just a brief general outline of the environment in which the players find themselves in, and then you, the players, should definitely take the time to discover this tavern, discover the palace, discover the dungeon. Help the dungeon master to now paint the larger image by interacting with it. My second bit of advice for utilizing the environment is, if you're the dungeon master, to think about how you can use the environment to challenge your players. Not necessarily to inconvenience them or to rob them of their special abilities, but rather instead, how can you help players to uh, utilize more of their resources and to challenge them. I think one of the ways you can think of it like is this. Let's say you've got the characters going into a swamp to defeat a hag and the swamp immediately of course is going to cause all different kinds of problems. There's all sorts of natural barriers, traps, uh, you're going to slow down their movement in the bog, and it's not going to be comfortable to sleep in the swamp if they, have to st if they have to spend the night. You can use this environment to challenge the players to think about what kinds of resources they can use to make their stay there more comfortable or to make the hunt go better. Are they going to just simply slug it out and maybe tire their characters, or are they going to risk using that extra spell slot that might come in handy for when they finally fight the hag? These kinds of challenging terrains aren't necessarily there to make the players lives miserable but instead to make them think economically about what they should or could do in order to achieve their quest 
The third thing that I would definitely recommend as far as terrains go is, well, to allow for things to change a little bit. You as the dungeon master should definitely have a pretty concrete idea of what you want within any particular environment. Major structures or landmarks or features should already be there in mind. And you as the player need to figure these things out. However, especially when it comes to like battles and whatnot, I think it definitely behooves everyone for the dungeon master to allow things to maybe be there that weren't originally there within their mind now then if you've described everything to a T or you have that big miniature like Matt Mercer has then well it's set in stone but if you are just describing a particular environment and you're allowing the characters to explore it once again kind of the whole coloring book scenario right here you can add or take away things that might help or help to challenge the players. And a good example for that is this. When I ran my Gangs of Errol Isle campaign, in the very first boss battle, there were these huge warehouses where the main fight happened. And originally, I just had it as your traditional massive warehouse, where, every, where it's just a huge building that can house all kinds of material. It's not necessarily a complex structure. However, one of the players really wanted to try to get up to these uh, archers that were on top of the roof. And while it was not originally part of the floor plan, I was like, you know what? Of course, these archers had to get up there somehow. They didn't just use an outside ladder. I mean, they could have, but instead it'd be a whole lot more interesting to now have a fight in the rafters, which means we have to have ladders and platforms that lead up to there. Okay, so I added that kind of on the spot because I didn't have a massive miniature set for the, my players to utilize and said I described the scene and they had to use their imagination to help fill in everything, I could add that. And that is something that helped to make the fight way more complex and way more interesting for the individual players. And that's something that you can do as a dungeon master, where you have a particular set in mind and as the action is unfolding or as the intrigue is unfolding, you can think about, hey, you know what? Like this might actually be really good to put this here. This would either help out a player who needs the help, or I could create this extra challenge with the terrain in order to make things way more spicy for the players. You will feel things out, and you have to definitely have good communication with your players in order to know what to add or to take away if you're playing with a more vague map for them to play within. Now, those three bits of advice, treating the terrain or the environment more as kind of like a coloring book that you allow people to explore, uh, definitely adding or taking away things where you feel like it might be beneficial to the overall story and to the players or to help challenge the players. And all of this stuff is just kind of there to really just make the gameplay experience way more engaging and interesting. And remember, terrain is there to help challenge the players. It's there to help them uh, make the most of their characters and to make them think economically and critically and not just simply fireball their way through everything. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I really do believe that this approach to Dungeons & Dragons can help novice writers figure out how to make more engaging scenes and moments within their stories. Now, just like I said, you should not be spending 15 minutes describing the setting. It definitely slows down the story. And I know that a lot of people joke and say, well, that's what Tolkien did. Actually, if you go back and read through the Lord of the Rings, yes, Tolkien is very descriptive, but Tolkien is actually very succinct with all of his descriptions. He only describes what is absolutely necessary in order to paint the broader picture, and you as the individual fill in all of the gaps with your imagination, and that's what should be happening within a story. However, if you as the author leave too many gaps, well then the reader might be doing way too much work and might kind of grow disinterested within the story. When someone reads, they want to be taken on an adventure and they fill in the gaps, they paint the picture themselves. But if you just give them a blank sheet of paper and you draw some dots, eh, not everyone is here to play connect the dots. Instead, what you can do is you can think about how you utilize an environment to draw out more of the experience of what it is for those characters to have within these various environments. Let's say, for instance, you have a character running along the beach. You can describe in one or two quick sentences how their calves burn 
running through that rough terrain as the sand slips underneath their feet, or how it feels good to kind of dip into the oncoming tide and feel the waves lap up against their feet and legs. Something like that just helps make the environment feel more real to the reader and just brings the world to life in a really neat way. Or let's say you use the environment to help bring out the action. You have this football game and it's raining and the field is muddy and as one of the star players, your, your lead character goes to make the critical tackle. They slip in the mud and they fall face down and they slide, allowing the enemy team, the opponent, the opposing team to score a critical touchdown. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? Can they pull out the win? What's going to happen? The environment plays against the character and heightens the tension and the suspense and elevates the action of that scene. You can also use the environment to bring out more of the humor. Let's say you've got characters going into someone's really cluttered house. You have the wizard who's just been collecting tomes and papers for decades. It's all been collecting dust. It's in teetering piles going all the way up to the ceiling. And one of the other people within the party gets really animated, throws their hands around as they talk, and hits one of these piles, and it causes an avalanche of papers and books. Boosh! completely burying them. Plumes of smoke go up everywhere. There's nowhere to hide because of all the piles of stuff. And so the players begin to choke on decades worth of dust. That right there helps to paint the scene way better. And if you set it up right with how the characters will react and everything like that, it can be a pretty funny scene. So thinking about it, utilize the environment more to bring out more of the characters and more of the story. The environment is something that shouldn't just simply be there to, to provide a backdrop. Ooh, look at that beautiful backdrop. That happens way too often. We especially see that nowadays more in cinema and in television, which is really sad because the setting is kind of what helps make the story. The more you utilize the setting, the more engaging the story will be, the more relatable the story will be, and the more the characters will have to do stuff, which allows you to tease out more of their character, their personality, who they are. It allows you to create tension, humor, action, suspense. This happens both in your writing and in Dungeons & Dragons. So, utilize more of the environment, and believe you me, it will make your stories way way better you don't have to put in a ton of effort and create that 15 minutes or 15 pages worth of description nope that's way too much instead use it properly economically here and there to help draw out the details of the world and your characters and your environment will play into one of your greatest strengths. So that's all the advice I have for this particular video. If you're looking for more writing advice, please check out our other videos here on our channel. You can also head on over to our podcast, Camille's Harem, found on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, The Works. We have writing exercises for all you novice authors out there to be found over at our Pinterest page. And of course, we would love for you to join our ever-growing community of novice authors. Links for all of that and more are in the description below. And until the next video, y'all, tschüss.